there's a neat little phenomenon known as the Hall Effect that pops up as a consequence of the magnetic force law. It involves a voltage showing up in a place you wouldn't at first expect it. Let's say we're pushing an electric current through some slab of somewhat conducting material. The slab is of length L, width W, and thickness T. And we apply some voltage lengthwise to drive that current. Let's also suppose that that current is made up of negative charges going from left to right, and that there's a magnetic field oriented into the page. Since we have charges moving through a magnetic field, they're going to feel a magnetic force that goes like QV cross B. And some right-hand rule shows me that those negative charges will feel a force down. So in addition to moving right, they start to veer downwards. And over time, a pretty short time usually, they build up on that bottom edge. And if the object is overall neutral, and a bunch of negative charges are hanging out on the bottom edge, there must be some leftover positives on the top edge. So what we have here is a charge separation, negatives on the bottom and positives on the top. That'll lead to an electric field pointing from top to bottom. And if there's an electric field pointing from top to bottom, there must also be a difference in voltage between the top and bottom. We call this voltage the Hall voltage. It's a voltage that tends to show up across conductors perpendicular to the direction of current flow when there's a magnetic field present. It's usually a pretty small voltage, but not always so small that we can ignore it. In the event we want to do some calculations, the easiest hook into the problem is to realize that the magnetic field is pushing charges down and the electric field is pushing them back up. We'll reach a steady state situation when enough charges pile up that the electric force balances out the magnetic force. Which is to say, when the magnitude of QE equals the magnitude of QV cross B. If the V and B are perpendicular, this is just QE equals QVB. Or E equals VB, where V is the speed at which the charges move across the conductor, which we call the drift speed. From here we can go in a variety of directions. For example, people often use the Hall effect to measure magnetic fields, which means solving for B and then writing the quantities involved in terms of things we can more easily measure. E is related to the Hall voltage and to the width of the slab, which is an especially easy relationship if we can assume that everything's pretty uniform. And the drift speed can be written in terms of things like the current density and the density of charge carriers in the particular material. Since voltages and currents are easy to measure, and charge carrier density is easy to look up, this gives us a quick and easy way to measure B. Now, the term Hall effect refers to the voltage that you get when you run a current through a magnetic field. But any time you have charges moving through a B field for any reason, you might get a similar kind of voltage. Take what's known as motional EMF. Instead of looking at a conductor in a circuit, let's look at a chunk of conducting metal by itself, but moving through a magnetic field. Maybe it represents an airplane with some metal wings or whatever. I'm not too picky. Point is, we have some metal moving through a magnetic field as shown. That metal is full of conduction electrons that are free to move. So as the rod moves, they feel a QV cross B force. The electrons get pushed down to the bottom of the rod, leaving behind positives on top. And the charge separation leads to an electric field and the electric field leads to a voltage. And as before, we reach a steady state when the electric and magnetic forces on the charges balance each other out, which lets us do a little finagling to write the induced voltage in terms of the speed of the bar and the strength of the magnetic field.
So there you have it. It's possible to create a voltage by dragging metal objects through magnetic fields. As configured here, you can't use this to produce usable electricity, since it isn't part of a circuit, but that's not to say people might not do something clever with it.